We're going to Moab. We got it. This is our first 4x4 we've ever built in our whole life. All right, it is the next day, and we are back to work on the Bronx Star. So we just cut out all these Clevet mount brackets that we're gonna weld together, and we're putting this big bad boy right on the back of the Bronx Star. This thing weighs like 50 pounds. So we've got a humongous list to go through. We have one list that we thought was finished, and then we started a new list that got even bigger. So new list, old list. This was the original list, thinking we'd have it all done. Then we started talking and going through it. So we've got fuel lines done, fuel tanks done, Cage is partially done, so we'll just cross out the CNA. Uh, battery's done. We need to do the Pro Charger, the air filter. We got it running. You'll want to check out the last video for that. Uh, Hillbilly's putting the dash in. We need to break the gears in, break axles in. We still need to do the exhaust. We still need to fill the transfer case. Now, here's where things went bad. Now we've got to do wire lights, dash, finish rear cage, Pro Charger, brake gears in, put doors on, mount fuel tank, exhaust, light bar, overflow. Oh my gosh, bar in between the front frame rails, coolant, claves break it. I think I was supposed to be clevis. So we got a clevis bracket, rock lights, cowl lights, rear cage lights, radiator cap, boost gauge mount. We got quite the list. We're gonna get super busy here for a minute because we want to stay focused, but we'll be right back to show you the progress and everything we got done. I'm building a main plug for the light bar, the side pointing lights on the cowl, the rock rock lights, and the back roll cage lights. This is gonna end up being a light bar mount. I plasmed it out on my table. I've about got this thing ready to rock and roll. So Hillbilly's working on the supercharger, which is the most important part of this whole build. So I'm replacing the sills or the O-rings on the supercharger because it was leaking out of them last time because we don't want leaking down in Moab. It's not good. I've got the light bar all mounted. We, we went with a rigid light that we already had. Um, this is one that a customer had that we ended up taking out and I've held on to it. We're putting it out front. This is going to be our eyes at night. And I think we might end up, we might try to get some pods for headlights just so that we've got them. We're going to be running some tail lights and blinkers and all that stuff in the rear. If we get enough time, we're gonna put blinkers in the front. But we may not have time. So we're doing the important stuff right now. That's why Hillbilly's working on the supercharger. Without that, we can't even go to Moab because it's so important. Rut row, we might have to do some reconfiguring on the pipe. We have a crossbar that's in the way. Oh, we're gonna have to make it work. Well, that's perfect. It'll work. That is perfect and it even looks beautiful. Just don't puncture your radiator. This we should just put straight up. Hillbilly's got the Pro Charger, Supercharger Extraordinaire thingy on there. I've got my bracket mounted. I can fit a wrench in here and that's about it. I've got that mounted. This is where the overflow bottle is gonna go. I'm gonna go get me a hose, double it back, put it into this. Need to get a radiator cap because that one don't fit. When I told you guys that I am finding Chad's fab stickers everywhere, I found another. How? When? <laughs> They're going down. We're gonna get them back. So good. I can't even work anymore. What the heck? Looks like some more than what I did last time. What are you doing? So I need to figure out the rear tube work. Um, I need to see where I can put bars. So we need to flex it out. Bars for what? For this rear. So basically, as long as I don't have a bar any lower than 12 inches, so I'm probably gonna go to, the, to 10. So if I just match this bar, to 10 inches, I think we'll be okay. And then we'll kick it up to match the front. We could leave it low, kick it up. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the tire. Yeah, well, it can be 10 inches. So we'll call it nine that way if we get in any real sticky situations. Okay. That's bumped out. So that's not coming down anymore. That's fully bumped. That's never coming up anymore. Now we've got a good idea. I'm gonna start making bars. I've lost my tape measure. I swear, I lose that thing more than any, anything in this entire shop. So I think what I'm gonna do is right off, oh, I can't. Cause if I put a bar down eight inches, it's gonna be right here in the strut zone. Okay, so we're gonna go seven inches. Cause that's gonna come right past the strut tower. Gotta trim this pipe down a little bit. Cause we've narrowed the whole engine bay up a little bit. So now we gotta trim this down so it will actually clear and not have hoses and stuff on a bind. Thing all this, the oil out, turn all the metal things out too. I'm being a fat kid. Snacking out. 
homemade no bake cookies. I haven't had a homemade one in, since I was a little kid. Cause today's Robbie's birthday. And you're eating his birthday cake? It was a bring a treat to work for employee day. This little doodad vacuums out the system, the coolant system, so there's no, it vacuums all the air completely out of it. And then once you do that, you shut the valve off so it's not sucking air out no more. You put this end right here inside the coolant reservoir and the vacuum pressure of what you vacuumed out of the motor will suck the coolant back in so you don't get uh, air pockets to cause overheating. It saves a lot of time because then you don't have to burp it. Because burping it can take days. Yeah, supercharger upside down. No, your camera's upside down. Turn your camera upside down, it'll be upside right. There you go, upside right. So yesterday, I received the new coilover shocks for the limo, and I made a mistake, and I ordered two and a half inch. These are 2.125s. So I got a hold of ADS Racing Shocks. They personally took this to FedEx and overnighted it to me. So thank you guys for that. If anybody needs some awesome service, Hit up ADS Racing Shocks, they're out of Arizona. We cut the hose off, we put a swivel on it, and we've got this strut ready to go back in the limo. So disaster averted, we're gonna get this mounted back in there and we're not gonna break it off ever again. I gotta try to position myself in here. I'm gonna cut this lower shock mount off and then we're gonna reposition it and re-weld it back on so that this strut doesn't bind like it did before and snap off. And then we gotta back it up with the skid loader to where we can get the welder outside. So it's gonna be a little bit of a process. <laughs> So I can't get the grinder all the way in, so I'm just gonna do a little tap tappy. So all we need to do is adjust this out about a half of an inch. So we're gonna put it about right here. So go in and we'll grind it all up. Right now I'm cutting the front bar that's going in between the uh, front frame horns. So that way it's all tied up in the front and protected. So if I hit a rock, it's not gonna try to split the frame rail or hit the uh, radiator or something. Well, I have to cut those off. Cause there's no other way we're getting that in there. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You can cut it, cut it open. Just don't cut it off. Like, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Cut it in so you can slide it, but don't, we need the length. So when we go to put a winch on it, you know? I've got the struts all figured out out on the limo. Wanna come out and sh I'll show you what's going on. All right, so what we figured out is that the brackets were just too tall, too much girth to them. So they were coming up here and they were binding. <laughs> so I've cut it all down. I've matched it to that other one. I'm gonna use this one as a reference for the other side because we have to do both sides. So right here, you can see Hillbilly. It's already, it's already touching right there. Mm -hmm. We're not even bottomed out. We're not doing anything and it's touching. So what I need to do is cut this bracket off, get the strut out of the way. We'll match it, we'll cut it down and then we'll cut the inside down. But we're only gonna take off and move one. So they need to be wider and smaller. And so you're doing one side at a time, right? Yeah, so okay. I'm doing this side and then we'll get the strut in to where we can move it. All right, so I'm gonna get inside this area and I'm gonna cut the front one and then I'm gonna round it all out so that it matches the back one. Then we'll lift it up, we'll get that coil in to where we can at least pull this car backwards well, maybe we'll string the welder out. Here in a minute, I'll figure out if I'm just gonna bring the welder out and weld it here. I don't know yet. Okay, so right now I'm finding the center of my rear light bar, which the rear light bar has brake, blinkers, reverse, license plate light, and license plate holder. We're gonna make it street legal. Robbie has the, some of the tools I need to finish the front. So why I wait, I'm gonna hurry and get this installed and go from, see where we're at from there. Thinking right somewhere in there. Nothing to see here. This is not a derby car for a derby that me, Paul, Matt, and Rudy are going to be in. That's not a 6 OLS that's going in my Toyota <laughs> L96. That's because that's a 2018 6 OLS. And it comes with L96 heads. I'm pretty pumped about it. We're gonna be moving this limousine back here so that I can pull a welder out and put that strut back on.
I'm gonna get the lower portion put in, and then we'll lift it and I'll put the top in. And there were no washers on it, and I'm really weird about washers and lock nuts, and I'm gonna washer it up. Hold it. Up. Whoa. Okay, we gotta come down very, very, very slow. Oh, whoa. Adley and Lincoln just got here, and Adley has a little surprise. It's my dad's birthday. Wish my dad a, a happy birthday. Taking the wheel spacer off, we really don't want to run them. And the reason the wheel spacer is on there is because the strut is mount, uh, bottom mount is a little too close. So when we articulate, it rubs. So now we're going to move the strut mounts inwards and get rid of the spacer. So me, Cody, and Hillbilly came in early this morning, 6 a.m., the day we're supposed to leave. We don't want to run wheel spacers. We're pulling them off and we're taking those struts and we're moving them in so that they don't bind up when this thing articulates. We've got that and a few other odds and ends. As soon as we get this thing all finished up, we're gonna go back to the Bronx Star and get that thing done. That has a lot more that <laughs> needs done than the limo. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're moving the strut from right there to there. That way it gives us enough clearance here that when this thing articulates, it won't bottom out in the back side of the strut and it won't bottom out on the tire. We're gonna leave these just in case. So if something here fouls up, we can unbolt it, put it back in the original spot, and then put wheel spacers on it. All right, so we've got everything all put back together on the rear. We're gonna let all the air out of this strut, zero it out. We're gonna put fresh, fresh nitrogen in both coilovers. So this is a little bit different than ORIs. So we're just gonna put 150 PSI of nitrogen in both. I think it takes 150. So we'll put 150 pounds on both sides. We're gonna flip the car around and we're gonna work on the front. I'm just gonna go to 160 just so that I'm right on a line. All right, we're right at 160 PSI. Yep, just twist that out. Okay, we're out. Mine's out. Okay. Robbie and Cody had to run to Napa and get some parts for the limo. Um, right before uh, Robbie left, he's looking from the back of the limo and it looks like it's sagged to the driver's side a little bit. As you can tell, it looks like it's this side's down, so it's sitting like this. So now I have to go back up with the hoist. I'm gonna adjust this jam nut right here to put more pressure down on the spring so it stiffens up to one side so it sits even, or sits level. I'm gonna get that turned and get it adjusted and lower back down and it's a lot of up and downs until you get it sitting level, so. Got it all adjusted. Now it's sitting. But it all adjusts. Not, that nut all tightened up, so there's more pressure on the spring. Now it's sitting level. All right, so one thing that we noticed when we were articulating the limo, it was spilling gas. So right here is the old filler neck seal. Little bit different. A lot of bit different. One's hard and crusty, the other one's soft and pliable. This one is most definitely worn out. So we don't want any gasoline or anything to be on the trails in Moab. So we're putting a brand new fuel filler neck sill in, and then the back end of this limo is gonna be completely finished. We've got the struts fixed, we've got all the bolts tightened, and now we're gonna have a fuel leak that's- Not gonna be a fuel leak no more. Yeah, a non-existent fuel leak. It's gonna keep the fuel inside. This is why the upper bent, <coughs> we put a .1250 wall DOM tubing as the upper link. Didn't really think much of it, but now we're putting in a quarter inch, two inch DOM upper link. It's gonna be a lot stronger. So if we do ever bump out on it, it's not gonna bend as drastic. So we're gonna cut this down to 45 inches, eyelet to eyelet, center to center, and then we're gonna get it welded up, put back in the front end of this, and that'll pretty much be the bulk of the hard work. Limo will be done. So we got Cody helping us, Hillbilly's helping us. It's just us three. So our friends over at Harbor Freight hooked us up. They sent us a brand new metal cutting bandsaw and this thing works flawless. It cuts this two inch DOM like it's butter. So thank you, Harbor Freight. All right, so we've got this upper link in and done. It's all tight. We're gonna get this limo flipped around and get the front nitrogen put in and the hubs. Why are Will and the teeth so that way there's nothing in the way of locking the hubs in and out. 
This side had the bad hub, didn't it? I think so. We'll have to get a new wire wheel and we're done. Oh. So while he's wire wheeling over there, I'm just taking a tap. These are 0.5, or these are five millimeter by 0.L, or by 0.8 thread pitch. So I'm just running the tap through all six holes. That way our bolts go in. We just don't want any issues. So we're re-threading them while we're cleaning the threads, cleaning the splines, putting brand new worn hubs on it so that we don't have issues in Moab. We keep saying that, but we literally do not want to be somebody's problem. The only reason we want to be a problem is if Rory has to carry us off a trail because we sent it. You sent it a little too hard, bud. Do you know how that goes together? Ish. We'll find out. Okay. We've got the worn hubs all installed. They're quarter turns, they're working perfect. I'm gonna get this beauty ring on. We're gonna pump these struts up. They're both empty. We're gonna get them to 150 PSI. So what we're doing is we're equalizing the pressure with this gauge. We could individually do them, but with this, it's got the bypass here. So they'll be the exact same. We're gonna go to 160. Right on. Exactly 160. All right, so we've got the limo done. We're gonna go through the list. Four by four shifter. We're not putting one. So that gets scribbled off. Hold on. Oh, he's gonna show you what we're gonna use to shift. There's the four wheel drive shifter. Private. All right, so every time we need to go in and out of four wheel drive, Hillbilly's gonna jump under it and put it into gear. Registration and insurance, got it. Decals, still need to do that. Bolt check everything, thought was done. We redid it and we took care of it today. Exhaust, it's good. Alignment, we took care of that. So the only thing left on this list is the decals. And so what Cody's gonna do is he's actually gonna sand this little area down, throw some rattle can white on it, let it dry, and then we're gonna decal over it. But the limo's done. Detailed and all. Yeah, it's even clean inside. And it's like halfway decent. Like I feel like, I feel like my mother could ride in here and feel comfortable. All right, a little, a little recap of where we're at on the Bronx Star. Hillbilly's got the supercharger, most important thing installed. Intercooler's on, it's mounted, light bar's on. We're putting a front frame rail section in. We're gonna put some D-ring holders so that in case we need to get pulled or whatever, we can get pulled. We don't have a winch. We don't have winches on anything. So that's an issue, but we'll get that worked out after Easter Deep Safari. I'm gonna be working on the back, primarily focusing on getting the gas tank all installed, getting it tied down to where everything's good. I'm gonna do some bars that go from the cage down to the frame. What are you working on? The front frame bar. Oh, this has coolant in it, right? Yes. So we need to go drive it. I think we need to go break these gears in. Nice. We're going to Moab. We got it. This is our first four x four we've ever built in our whole lives. No, 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 no. Sorry. It's, it's our already first... four-wheel drive, four by four. We yeah, sorry. Upgraded. This is our first cool project, aside from a derby car, aside from a restoration. I'm pretty proud of us. I think we I think we did a pretty good job. I'm very happy. All right, we're gonna go break some gears in. Yeah, we got a cop following us. Pull into Randy's driveway. And we're currently being pursued by an officer of the law. But you got a blinker, right? Yeah. Good, and it works? Yes, it does. Oh, he's turning. Oh, good. All right, turn around. All right, we, we ditched him. I am installing brackets for a steering stabilizer because when we was doing the test drive slash break the gears in, I hit one little bump. I had the transfer case locked in so the fr front tires, uh, gears would break in. The tires were unlocked, so it was just the differential spinning. Every time I would hit a little bump, I would get the death wobbles. Really bad. Only one way to fix that, and that's steering stabilizer. It's the quickest way to fix it. Okay, so I had them uh, cut open the frame to get the front bar in. So when I done it, I done it to where when I smash this all down, it'll be nice, symmetrical, and not have that big hump. It'll look cleaner. Man, I hate welding upside down. All right, so we've got the headlights now mounted. We built some brackets that match the light bar. Now we've got some blinker brackets we just built on the plasma table. They're pretty simple. 
They go just like that. Wires come through it, they fit just right. We bolt that up and they're gonna go right here. All right, so it is Sunday morning, 3.26 a.m. So we are just about almost 22 hours up straight. We've just been working. We've got this thing just about finished. We're gonna go home and sleep, come back. Got a few minor things to do on the Bronx Star, and then we are headed to Moab. We've got the limo done. I can't wait to show you guys everything we did today on the Bronx Star, but we're tired, so we're headed home. So it is tomorrow. Yesterday was a 22 hour day of nothing but a frenzy. So we just work. We have the entire A team here. We've got Cody back, we've got Hillbilly back. We've got Damry slinging the camera. But yesterday, we were in absolute crazy grind mode. Hillbilly successfully got all of the wiring finished up. All the lights are on, all the rock lights. Everything's wired from front to back. I'm just gonna show you everything that got done. So we got that front bumper in, we've got the hooks, we've got the headlights mounted, we have the blinkers mounted, and they're operational. We got the light bar working, overflow catch cans all in, doors have been installed. And back here, we got all of our double bar bracing in with all our uprights. That took forever. We had to double notch 10 three inch bars. We got this tricked out bar all put in. We got our strut tower tied in. Our fuel tank is mounted. All the fuel lines are ran. Hillbilly is finishing up his most important part, temporary registrations. So this thing is legal. I'm gonna get the spare tire mounted right here. I'm gonna put two crossbars and then we're gonna use our buddy Sean from Bikes and Beards, his tank straps. And we're gonna use the tank straps just to hold that spare tire to the bars. We got our first bar notched. We're just doing this simple because we're, we're trying to get on the road. So I might get extravagant after, but for now we're keeping it simple. Cool. All right, so we'll get this one set. What are you doing? Putting a emblem on that a fan sent me. All right, we're getting the spare tire all mounted. That and then the nitrogen, and then we're all finished up. Now that all the weight is on this, we have to reset the ride height because it had compressed some. We're gonna get four inches of chrome and then we're gonna have Hillbilly jump inside. That'll basically account for the weight of the gas or whatever. It's four and a half right there. Yep. Whoa. We almost forgot that we've got a handyman jack that needs to be mounted. So this is the last thing we're doing. We've got this. The handyman jack all mounted up. It worked out really well. It fit perfect right here on this rear bar that we just installed for the spare tire. So we've got the spare tire, the jack. We just need a few tools and we're ready to go. Why? Oh, we need to put the Bronx Star decals on. Bronx Star is done. So I'm building some chain steps to get into the limo because the boss says she needs them, so we're putting them on there for her. Cool as this may look, she's a bit of a trailer queen. This is so 
felt like it went up. It Good. did. Oh yeah. That ain't going nowhere. We found Hillbilly. Wonder where he could be. Oh, we can look. Would you look at that? Just look at it. Look at it. Did you guys see his house? There's his house. He's hauling it with. He's the smart one. He's not getting an Airbnb or anything. He's just bringing his house with. He did tell us to know if someone is a real hillbilly, their camper is better than his house. Than their house. And he didn't lie. It's a dang nice trailer. And he said his camper is better than his house. <laughs> yeah, we didn't say that. He said that. We're in the world. We're under it.